Hello. My name is Ann Spencer, and I'm a product person. And for those of you who are listening or watching for the first time, I had the honor and delight of meeting Pete Warden when I was the data editor at O'Reilly Media. We've had lots of conversations over the years about chatting about industry and whatnot, so we decided to record some of our conversations and share them with the world. And yeah, I'm Pete Warden. Uh, as I like to say, I, I was working on AI before it worked <laughs> uh, with a background at uh, Google and TensorFlow um, and now at my new startup. And one of the things that I'm really glad that we're having and another opportunity to chat is during the last chat, something that you said at the end kind of stuck with me, right? You were talking about how you wish machines were better at listening to us. Right. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to totally ask him about that later. So I'm really glad that we're having a chance to talk about that today. Um, for those of you uh, who are watching or listening for the first time and haven't read the blog post, the blog post is about some of the challenges that people will have when they're setting up their own IoT devices, right? The challenges being a setup tax or the perception of value or usefulness and the energy drain. And one of the things I will totally admit that jumped out to me was actually the title of the post, because the title of the post- A little click is, yes. Yeah, I was like, the title of the post is why has the internet of things failed? And probably because I've known Pete for such a long time and realized how many years and years he spent on devices, both hardware and software. I was like, what is this? Um, so this is why we're going to kick off the question of the origin of the post, right? But you being you, like, spoiler alert, you talk about inspiration for the future and how you're so excited. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think for people who were like me, when they first read the title, you were like, what's up, right? So I think they would um, appreciate some background context about that, right? Yeah, and so I kind of wanted to get people thinking because I've really been frustrated that the only way people are thinking about adding smarts to everyday objects is through network connections. And that's where the whole Internet of Things comes from. And fundamentally, it's this idea that just like with desktop computers and laptops and phones, um, the inevitable future is that everything that's got compute in it is going to get connected to the to an always on network which is fundamentally what the Internet of Things is about. It's like, hey, let's do what we did with phones and PCs and everything else, and then we'll move into this kind of world where the cloud is this seamless part of your whole system. Um, and it drives me crazy because there are real fundamental engineering problems that prevent us from, uh, prevent that, vision of the future from being a realistic one. So I can't, I've been for years trying to separate out the internet of things like connectivity idea um, from, hey, let's make our everyday objects smarter because they're not the same thing. But the internet of things is kind of the only vision that's really widely out there for this stuff. And it, it just keeps leading us into dead ends. For sure. I remember towards the end of the post that you had mentioned that a frustration about how much attention from both academia and commercial is on the technical feasibility, is on the connection itself, rather than is it actually useful for people? Is it helpful for people? Right. Um, you know, granted, in tech in general, that's kind of an issue. Right? <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but I could see the frustration with it being with the IoT is because it's been around for a long time, right? Oh, yeah. So. Since since uh, the first references I was able to find, you know, in my Wikipedia research were, like, back in the 80s, even. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, and it really came into the mainstream in, like, the early 2000s. Um, and one thing I didn't really go into in the post was, okay, if this idea is so wrong, you know, and I talked through, you know, mm -hmm usability like why these why this approach leads to devices that aren't very usable it's very hard mm -hmm. to set up devices that aren't very useful like don't mm -hmm. do anything that's actually beneficial to users um and just turn into energy vampires and it's like you might think okay these 
the and none of those points are particularly controversial like there there's mm -hmm. nothing you know there's data to back each of those up but given those points why is this still kind of the recurring vision and the recurring theme and i really see sort of two parts of this uh you know of motivation behind this and i didn't have time to go into this in the post but this is why i wanted to kind of geek out about this here um number one is every manufacturer that creates like a washing machine or a consumer you know any kind of consumer appliance has massive business model envy of all of these tech companies that have subscriptions and recurring revenue and uh you know you see even from the stock market like companies with recurring revenue are valued way more highly than companies that have to kind of get paid when somebody buys their thing and then they only get paid again when somebody actually goes and buys a new thing from them uh you know because they don't have that sort of you know subscription that people can forget about <laughs> in their uh you know on their account and just you know they don't have that stickiness and so what i imagine the only way that i can imagine this have, has got so much traction in the business world uh has been that at the executive level it's a very easy sell to say mm. to the CEO, mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. You know, don't you wish that you were valued more like Salesforce or Google or, you know, another company that just gets a lot of, you know, recurring revenue? Um, the way to do that is to have your thing go online and actually start getting money out of your users in kind of a continuous stream versus mm -hmm. in these like mm -hmm. big lumps. And we saw that with uh, BMW recently tried to charge a subscription for heated seats and <laughs> you know it's the most ridiculous idea and it got you know it got it got ridiculed <laughs> but you see yeah. that, you see that hunger you know oh, like totally. like, totally. like, like yeah. the, the, you know it's it's it must be so frustrating to be in this business that's making steady revenue but you're not making it in the way that you know wall street and the stock market likes so you're you're valued much less highly so i see the business side the pressure there has always been oh we're gonna like enable subscriptions like that's mm -hmm. how we're gonna mm -hmm. and unfortunately i think a lot of these executives just haven't had the technology experience to understand the fundamental limitations the the technology that's being pushed actually gives them um and i feel like on the other side there's a lot of um both academics and engineers who are mm -hmm. like hey yeah. i i've got these you know i've got this really in-depth knowledge of the cloud i've seen how things have played out on desktop on um you know on mobile where the cloud has become this like you know just you don't even think about using it. You just make API mm -hmm. calls. You know the internet's mm -hmm. going to be there. For sure. Yeah. And so, yeah. like, uh, people coming from that world will just be like, of course this is going to happen with all of these embedded devices. Like, it's it's inevitable. And so they build services, they build technology, they, you know, craft sales pitches that um, don't reflect the unusual constraints that occur when you're trying to put these devices in these like everyday objects, the cost, the energy, um, the lack of user willingness to do setup, the fact that communication, like any kind of communication is not free, um, which is why you have to do that setup because somebody has to pay for your you know your packets going back and forth and um so you need a an authorized user you need an account you need all of this stuff um so hopefully that doesn't sound like too much of a conspiracy theory <laughs> about why the internet of things has become such a popular idea despite its kind of shaky you know real world foundations but you know as i've thought about it over the years that's that's what i've seen and that's the only way i can kind of 
see it making sense that we've ended up in this situation. Yeah, I, one of the things that you also mentioned in the post was about a compelling use case or a lack of a compelling use case outside of technical feasibility, right? Because like, you know, having grown up in tech, literally, uh, I completely understand how it's possible to have so much focus on the technical feasibility, the connection, um, having the infrastructure already there and just plugging into that, right? Like, I, I totally get that perspective just because when you're in it all day, it can be yeah. kind of hard to step away. But um, but what, what do you think would be a compelling use case to kind of help spark people out of that, right? To help spark people thinking differently? So um, actually one of my favorite use cases is um, Keurig. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, you know, they, they, they've definitely been the subject of some uh, controversy over the years. Um, but one of the things I really like that they've done is, first off, they use computer vision in their Brewmaster technology to mm. tell which pod you've put in. Mm. And then they set it up so you can actually get subscriptions of exactly what you're using. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. instead of these Amazon subscriptions where you end up with either stuff piling up because you're not using it fast enough or you don't have it when you need it, um, you know, it's just this, it just does what, what you would like. It just gives you, it just makes sure that you always have the coffee that you're using when you need it. And that's not a very, um, you know, it doesn't seem like a very high tech feature, but in terms of quality of life, like I would love that for, you know, everything I'm using, if it can just mm -hmm. automatically reorder and make mm -hmm. sure that I have, you know, I don't have stockpiles of stuff um, cluttering up my house, but I always have confidence that there's something there when I need it. Like, that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But it's very rare that people actually start off with useful user features like that. And that's one of the few that I can think of that actually requires a network connection. And even though it requires a network connection, it actually starts off with on-device computer vision to recognize the right. pods. So I, 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 I feel would love like, that. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that. I have coffee like so many times during the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're almost at time. Any last words before we sign off on our on our episode two chat today? Or no, I I mean. I just want to reiterate, I really love putting technology in everyday objects. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to kind of get people out of that, you know, IoT is the only way to do that. Like, I'm so excited about what we can do on the edge and starting off with like, okay, what can we do for users versus, you know, starting off with the CEO saying, we need subscriptions and then like trying to work backwards from that. And, you know, I feel, which I feel like explains so much of, you know, what has failed so far. Oh, for sure. And thank you for providing some insights into the background context of everything, because I definitely had a lot of questions in my head when I first saw the title. And then when I got to the end, I'm like, okay, this makes sense, right? But, <laughs> 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 but, but appreciate that. And I know if I was feeling it, I have a feeling that a lot of you know people we know in common are probably feeling the, the exact same thing. So again, I appreciate the time and it's always great to chat and I'll look forward to the next one. Thank you so much, Anne. Bye, everybody.